When it comes to backlighting retro handhelds, not all consoles are created equal. Nintendo's Game Boy line of systems benefit from a multitude of options that vary in difficulty. Sega's Game Gear, on the other hand, presents a much higher barrier to entry due to the complexity and difficulty of modding. However, with backlight options such as the Retro Kai Magic Screen, these mods are getting easier to accomplish. Retro 6 continues on that momentum and has a new backlight kit that promises to be one of the easiest to install. Let's take a closer look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, we got a really awesome episode. As you all may know, I love the Sega Game Gear. We'll be taking a look at a brand new screen mod for the Game Gear from Retro 6 and build a really awesome, totally custom console in the process. I have some really neat components that I'll go over later in the video. I'm really excited for this project. All right, so on this show, we already looked at a couple kits that exist in the market to improve the Game Gear's LCD. We looked at McWill's solution, which was the first Game Gear LCD mod, and currently the most difficult to install out of all available options. Then we looked at one that was released from a French company called Retro Kai. They released the Magic Screen, which greatly simplified the installation process and has fantastic results. If you haven't already seen those episodes, I'll leave them linked down below so you can watch them later. Now, there is a brand new kit from Retro 6 which promises to continue on the trend of making simpler backlight solutions for the Sega Game Gear. So that's what we'll be looking at today. Now, Retro 6 sent this my way free of charge, but I'll be providing you with my own unbiased opinion of the product and how I think it stacks up to the competition. All right, as usual, I'm gonna start things off by briefly going over the components of the Retro 6 clean screen kit, as well as everything else I'll be using for this build. Then I'll show you how to put it all together, discuss the key features of the mod, go over the pros and cons, and end things by providing you with my overall thoughts. The first part of the Retro 6 clean screen kit is the driver board. This is what converts the Game Gear signal to a displayable image for the new LCD we'll be using. It's a really cool purple color and is even signed by both Martin and Luke who both worked on developing this kit, which is really awesome. The next item is the TFT LCD. It looks to be the same as the McWill and the Retro Kai kit, so I'm sure it will produce a very crisp and high quality image. And to keep the LCD nice and aligned, the kit includes a 3D printed centering bracket, which I absolutely love. As you all know, I'm a huge fan of kits that come with 3D printed brackets. The last item for this mod is a very unique flex cable. Retro 6 calls it the wire-free install kit since using it means you will not need to solder regular wires. The unique shape of the flex cable allows for simple solder connections to be made, which will become apparent in the tutorial. Now, as of the making of this video, the only Sega Game Gear that this kit is compatible with are version VA1 single ASIC models. Retro 6 will be selling another wire-free kit that will work on the VA0 dual ASIC model in the future. Now on a side note, Retro 6 sells the driver board, the LCD, and the wire-free install kit all separately. So you need to make sure you purchase all three of these items if you want the full kit that I just went over. Great, so that is the clean screen kit from Retro 6. We will also be installing a Retro 6 USB-C clean power regulator. I did a separate dedicated review of this product, which I'll have linked down below. Now, this is a brand new soundboard from Retro Kai that we'll also be installing. It completely replaces the original soundboard and it utilizes tantalum capacitors instead of the original electrolytics. I'll be doing a separate video on this product in the future, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss it. Now, the last item I'll be using, I'm actually really excited about. It is a totally custom Macho Nacho shell from my buddy Andrew of Retro Gear Customs. Andrew makes really amazing custom Game Gear shells, which just look absolutely stunning. You'll be able to purchase some of his shells on the Retro 6 website, so definitely be on the lookout for that. If you aren't already, follow him on Instagram to keep up to date with his latest creations. 
I'll leave a link to it down below. Okay, so I think I covered everything. And without any further ado, let's start this build. Okay, let's get this Game Gear open and remove the motherboard. Now, prior to doing any modding on the Game Gear console, you want to make sure to replace all the electrolytic capacitors if you haven't already. These consoles are extremely old and are known to have low quality capacitors. I actually replaced all the caps in this Game Gear with the Retro 6 ceramic cap kit. It's what I use on all of my Game Gears. Okay, here we can see there is some sort of damage which looks to be caused by an old leaky battery. Thankfully, there was no damage to any of the components. Now go ahead and unplug the cables to both the power and soundboard. Remove the following 8 Phillips screws to remove the motherboard from the shell. Carefully remove the motherboard, then remove the 4 Phillips screws securing the LCD. Now we're going to remove the CFL light tube by desoldering it from the motherboard. Next, desolder the two fuses on either side of where the LCD used to be located. Peel the tape that supports the LCD ribbon cable. Add a bit of flux and gently desolder the LCD ribbon cable from the motherboard. You want to be careful and take your time doing this. Now we're going to start removing some components starting with the L2 coil. Then remove resistors R56 and R57. Be sure to remove any excess solder and clean the area. Next, cut and isolate the 34 volt wire. Now we're going to install the 3D printed bracket onto the LCD, like so. To install the new LCD into the motherboard, align these four holes with the corresponding four holes on the motherboard. Then drop in the clean screen driver board on top, again making sure everything is aligned, and then fasten the four screws. And this is what it should look like. I put some bubble wrap on top of the LCD to protect it while I complete the rest of the mod. Now we're going to install the first flex cable. Drop it in place and it should align with all the necessary solder points thanks to its unique design. Once in place, I tacked it down by soldering to the left L2 coil pad. After tacking it in place, go ahead and make all the solder connections as shown. Then solder all six pads on the driver board. And this is how everything should look. Next, drop in the other flex cable and begin making those connections. I started with the group of the four tiny resistors near the bottom of the motherboard. After making all the necessary connections, let's flip the motherboard over. We now have to solder to pin 9 and pin 20. 
To help with this part, I use some Kapton tape to hold down the flex cable flush to the motherboard. Make sure the flex cable is aligned with pin 9 and pin 20 before soldering. Now solder the connections. I used a piece of thin gauge wire to bridge the connection and give it more mechanical strength. Then cut off the excess with some flush cutters. Now back on the other side, you can see here that the pads are not aligned with the flex cable. I had to push it into alignment, which wasn't too big of a deal. I tacked one of the pads into place and then soldered the rest. Next, go ahead and insert the LCD ribbon cable into the connector on the driver board and lock it in place. And this is how everything should look. Now let's prep the front shell. Go ahead and install the speaker first. Then install all the buttons and membranes. Peel off the protective film and drop in the motherboard. Fasten it in place with the eight Phillips screws. Next, we're going to install the Retro Kai soundboard. Then install the Retro 6 USB C power board. Plug everything in and then button up the console. Now let's install the glass screen lens. Chuck in some batteries. And you're done. Oh man, this is absolutely my favorite Game Gear build. The screen is beautiful, it has USB-C, a fantastic audio chip, and the shell is absolutely stunning. I actually removed the rear stickers from the old Game Gear off camera and slapped them onto this build and it makes the system look factory, sort of in a way. I'm totally in love with it. Now thankfully, the clean screen shares a lot of great features we've seen before on other kits, so let's start with that. This kit has several different display modes. By pressing and holding start, two, and left on the D-pad for about two seconds, you can cycle through the various modes. The first one being a stretched mode to fit the Game Gear viewing window perfectly. Then that's followed by the same mode, but with scan lines. Next is a horizontally scaled mode that stretches the image slightly to remove any horizontal shimmering. Again, this is also followed by a version with scan lines. Then we have a fully integer scaled mode, however it crops the image slightly in order to achieve this. And of course here is the same mode but again with scan lines. And the last display mode is a 1 to 1 integer scaled image also with its very own scan line version as well. For me, I prefer the default mode that fits the image to occupy the entire screen real estate. The shimmering really doesn't bother me too much, and I actually like the way it looks. 
Now also really awesome is the fact that you can use the brightness wheel to adjust the brightness. This green gets incredibly bright and can be dimmed all the way to the point where it's completely blacked out. The Retro Kai kit has the same functionality and I believe the new versions of the McWill kit do as well. Now something that I didn't enable on this kit is the ability to output video via VGA. By pressing start and left at the same time, you can output via VGA on an external monitor. This is something that can be done with the McWill kit, but not on RetroKai's magic screen. And the last great feature is power efficiency. Retro 6 provided some footage that shows the power draw when at the mid-level of brightness, and it looks to be about one watt of power. That's pretty efficient when compared to the original Game Gear. Great, so those are all the major features of this kit. Now let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, the wire-free install flex cable does indeed simplify the installation process. While this isn't a drop-in solution, we all know modding Game Gears are a bit more involved than, say, a Game Boy. There are only a few components to remove, very much like the Retro Kai kit, and far fewer than the McWill. I really like how flex cables are now being utilized a lot in the mods we are seeing. I feel that this is a great way to improve the simplicity of these mods, as well as give them an overall more polished look. Also, similar to the Retro Kai kit, I very much like the included aligning bracket. I think it is a much more elegant solution than the McWill kit's approach, which requires you to solder the LCD in place. And now let's get into the cons. Now I only really have two, and they both have to do with the flex cable. By and large, it's an excellent solution to wiring up the backlight kit, and it's definitely one of the best solutions that I've seen so far. However, I noticed that the flex cable needed to be contorted and doesn't lay perfectly flat on the motherboard. Now this is a small nitpick and it doesn't affect performance, but I feel it may put a little bit of stress on some of the solder joints, although not enough to cause any issues. Now you have to consider that this is a pre-production unit and Retro 6 is making a few refinements before releasing to the public. The only other con is soldering to those two small LCD pins. I found this to be the most difficult part of the mod. While I really like the approach of using the flex cable, I found that this part of the flex cable needed the additional support of capped on tape. Again, this is a minor inconvenience, and based on discussions with Retro 6, they'll be releasing a version of the flex cable that actually does not need to be soldered to those pins, which is awesome, and I'm really looking forward to that. Now, not a con, but something that Retro 6 has brought to my attention is that the image is slightly off-center by a couple of pixels. They informed me that this would be corrected in the production versions of the kit. I actually hadn't noticed it, but just wanted to make you all aware. So besides this short list of cons, I have to say that I am really liking this kit. It has a ton of great features, and I think the pros definitely outweigh the cons. So there you have it. The Clean Screen Game Gear Kit from Retro 6. A fantastic kit that is truly a step in the right direction to make upgrading the Game Gear LCD more accessible. I want to thank Retro 6 for sending me this pre-production kit so that all of you can get an early look at the clean screen mod for the Sega Game Gear. Also, shout out to Andrew of Retro Gear Customs for making this beautiful Macho Nacho shell. This will be my new daily driver for all of my Game Gear games. As always, I'm curious about what you all think of this build, so definitely leave me a comment with your thoughts down below. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, see you next time.